بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر فرینڈز دس از آور سیکنڈ ویڈیو ان دا کانٹیکسٹ آف اسٹیل کنیکشن ڈیزائن ان دس ویڈیو وی ول لرن ہاؤ ٹو ماڈل اینڈ ڈیزائن دس کنیکشن آن دا سافٹ ویئر آئیڈیا اسٹیٹیکا دس از دا کنیکشن فار دا ٹرسٹ دیٹ وی ہیو ڈیزائن ان آور اسٹیل ڈیزائن کورس یوزنگ مائیڈاس جین لیٹ می شو یو دس از دا ٹرسٹ شیڈ دیٹ وی ہیو ڈیزائن and this is the truss that we are talking about so we will design this particular connection along with the purlins so let me remove the irrelevant purlins so these are the purlins on the top cord on the both side of the truss and this are the braces and this one is the top cord of the truss so this particular joint that we will be designing in this video bottom cord connection of this truss we have designed in the previous video i gave brief introduction about idea aesthetica also in that video if you do not watch that i am sharing the link in the description please go and watch that one so that you can better learn this connection using idea statica so in this connection this is the top cord of the truss and these two are the diagonal braces and this one is the vertical braces and these two are the purlins that are seating on the top cord of the truss we will design this connection using gusset plate so let's get into the software screen before getting started If you are new to our channel then please hit like and subscribe button and share as well with your friends and let's learn structural engineering together One more thing we have already started design course related to reinforced concrete structures if you did not watch those videos then please go and watch those links of those videos i am sharing in the description of this video so let's get started So this is the first screen of the software idea statica so let's go to the connection these are the pre built templates that we will be using to design our connection so let's select this class and we are having the hss tube as a top cord and we will use the gusset plate and welds for the braces to create project so this is the connection in this video i will go a little fast because uh, i am assuming that you have watched my previous video in which i have talk about all these options in big detail so we are not using this section so just go to add hss 152.4 by 152.4 by 3.2 okay this one and diagonals hss 50 by 50 by 3.2 and similarly for diagonal 2 it is already in this list okay now one more thing we normally use control s to save the project in other softwares but in idea statica control plus s does not work so you have to click on this button to save your project since we are having the three bracings the two diagonals and the other one is the vertical so let's copy this diagonal and uh, first name this particular ch as top cord and this one as vertical now let's just calculate the angle of inclination for this top cord in midas gen go to query query nodes and just select this particular point and this the horizontal distance is 5000 mm and this to this the vertical distance is 1200 so by using little trigonometry we will get the angle of inclination as 13.5 approximately so gamma pitch as 13.5 so it is inclined as this one there is an error which is saying that cannot execute the operation because this particular member d2 let me of this vertical so this d2 is not connected now so let's just leave it aside for the time being will change it later now go for the d1 and let's calculate the angle for d1 it's 1000 and it's 
720 so we are having the angle of 35.7 is approximately equals to 35.8 and for this d2 we are also having the same angle with the horizontal so just go to d1 and give it minus 35.8 and for d2 same minus 35.8 and for vertical we will set beta direction to 0 and this angle to 90 should be minus 90 all right now go to sp this is the operation named stiffening plate so this is the stiffening plate so let's change the origin from member to joint so this is disappeared so let's view it as a transparent so this is this is the plate so changing its rx angle as 90 and rz angle as 13.5 now let's change its position in x as 50 and in z as minus 170 so how i put this value exactly this cannot be done at the first time you have to do trial and error for certain times let's say minus 150 will go to this situation so let's increasing the value by 5 milli so increase this value by trial and error to so see this particular plate is now at this location now increasing the b1 as 350 b2 as 150 this h1 as 100 and h2 is 0 why because let's say it's 50 so this is projecting from this as a center to that side so we are not interested to do so just set it as zero let's make this plate as 370 now go to this gusset operation for the gusset plate so this is actually the operation for welding this member to this plate this gap should be 25 mm and this weld should be 6 now we will copy this gusset operation for vertical member as well so just copy this and change this member d2 to vertical this is connected to existing plate which is sp1 and this is not related to anyone so leave it as blank now we will weld this particular plate sp1 with this top cord by using the operation cut of plate selecting the type as weld modified member as sp1 and cut by the member so just select the member and what is this plate top cord web 1 so just select top cord web 1 so here we can see this particular weld has been generated 6mm weld okay the software automatically increase the length of the top cord the main supporting member for this connection okay now what else remaining is the per length so let's save this project now let's add a new member and just rename it as per length transparent mode so this is the purlin this will not a continuous member rather it is an ended member its beta direction should be 90 and this gamma pitch should be 0 see from this view all right now this purlin should be inclined as it will be seated on the top of this purlin so it should be inclined with the same angle as that for the top cord so alpha rotation must be the same as this gamma pitch for this so it's 13.5 so it, it is rotated in the clockwise direction so it should be in the negative sign all right and now this purlin must be seated on the top of this top cord so we'll have to move it in the upward direction so there are the three offset directions in x y and z so how to know that in which direction we have to give the offset so that the purlin should go up so to do so just 
click on this button LCS local coordinate system for each members so this particular axis local axis are for this pardon so it is telling us that Z direction is upward so we will have to give the Z offset how much you can try an error 100 let's say 120 140 right so it is in the top exit okay let's off this local axis now now we will connect this Perlin by using a cleat angle so we are having the option for cleat as well this one but this operation will not work for this connection that we want so we'll add the stiffening member so let's just click on the edit and we will manually add the angle section we have to change the cross section of this stiffening member SM and we will make it as a angle section so how much will be the height of the angle it will be dependent on the height of the purlin because cleat angle connecting the purlin is of the same height as that of the purlin so just go to purlin and this added parameters so we, we can see that our purlin are having the height of 76.2 so just go to sm plus button and we'll manually selecting the dimension of the angle steel a36 go to the transparent mode so this is a our cleat now how to rotate this cleat angle to make our connection with the purlin so let's first make the beta direction as 90 and view from this angle now make the alpha rotation as 13.5 similar as that for purlin now it is moving in the clockwise direction 13.5 is not working so let's uh, check 90 minus 13.5 76.5 yes it is okay we have to move it upward so the same procedure let's select this button to see the local coordinate system for the number so we can see now for this particular angle here are the local coordinate system so for moving upward so to move this cleat upward we'll have we have to give the offset in y direction so these are not the offsets these are the offsets so in y let's try 100 no let's try 90 no 95 95 is okay and we'll have to move it beyond this plate of the purlin let's check the axis it's z axis positive z axis so just move it it's 30 little more 32 all right so 32 is okay so we can see in the solid view it is okay now we have to set this length of the cleat as we are having the box of 152 outer dimension so half of 152 so just selecting this as one length one 76 length 2 76 as well right so it is perfectly aligned with the width of the box okay now we will add another purlin we see it at this location so let's copy this purlin name it as purlin2 let's go to the transparent mode as we can see that this plus 90 beta direction will make it overlapping these two purlins so let's make it as minus 90 this is this one and this this alpha rotation should be 180 minus 13.5 166.5 so it should be minus 166.5 it has gone downward because this minus 90 turn the local axis upside down so the positive z for this purlin is now in the downward direction so we have to make this offset in z as negative so move it to the upward direction All right now let's close this local axis now we'll add now we'll add bones to connect the purlin with the cleat so just go to new operation 
bolt we have to connect the two plates only two items only with the bolt this plate the highlighted one and this particular one so so we have to give it a number two item count item one is from the member and what is the member this particular one it is saying that sm1 bottom flange 1 so selecting sm1 bottom flange 1 and the item 2 is also a member perlin web 1 member perlin web 1 so this is the bolt now we have to set the location for this bolt so this bolt is from the reference of this particular edge of the sm1 why because item 1 is sm1 so the edge is the so this edge is the reference point for this bolt so let's change the position as minus 40 to keep the edge distance to the bolt as 40 mm and rows as 0 because we don't want the bolt to this location so move it upward as 20 it's okay so it is on the center line approximately okay now we have to set the bolt as a 8307 half inch bolt. we'll copy this bolt since in the bolt grid 1 we have selected purlin 2 rather purlin 1 so selecting purlin 1 and in grid 2 it's purlin 2 now we have to make the bolt location because it's overlapping the bolts we have to locate the bolt here so see this one from this edge it is 40 mm from this edge it must be 40 mm and this total one is 152 so 152 minus 40 should be that particular value so minus 112 it is okay so it is referring from the same location but the value is 112 okay now we have to weld this sm1 stiffening member with the top plate of the top cord so to do so just go to the new operation and select the weld or contact placement is from edge to surface because we have to weld the edge of this plate to the surface of this one so edge to surface type is weld member or plate which is a member which member it is sm1 web1 edge indexes so see transparent mode so we have to weld the edges number 1, 3 and 4. So 1 space 3 space 4 with top cord web 3. It is also a member. So it is welded. So welds are created. So we have to change this weld as a lit weld on the front side weld thickness 3 mm because according to the AISC specifications we cannot provide the weld thickness greater than the members connecting member thickness since we are having the angle of 3 mm thickness so we have to make the weld thickness maximum as 3 okay so now our connection is ready now we'll have now we'll add the loads in that one so before adding the loads one concept regarding the degrees of freedom since our braces all the braces are part of a truss so they are only carrying axial forces so we'll have to set the model type as the last one n v y v z means axial force shear in y and shear in z this is very very important so we can see that this plus sign is now showing similarly do for d2 vertical as well all right and forces in the node so we can see in the in our wireframe this all members are concurrent at a single point which is this node so all the forces must be built up in the nodes for these three braces okay the top cord is a supporting member so it does not matter we can leave it as it is now for the purlins let's go to our more Midas gen model 
and let's open the bending moment diagram first since these purlins are beam members let's plug in the scale factor as 2 okay so we can see here for the purlins let's uh, solid view this So for the purlin, there is no bending moment for the purlin at this particular joint because we have applied the releases at this location. Okay. Similarly, in z direction, also no bending moment. Only we are having the shear forces in y and shear forces in z at this particular location. All right. and we are not having the axial forces as well for this purlin we will set the model as n b by v z okay now we will pick up the forces from the software so let's first check the f z value let's first select the purlin only i and j node apply so the shear forces at Governing load combination number two is three point six. All right. So these two shear forces are acting in the downward direction. Okay. Similarly for this, so the maximum one is the three point six kilonewton. Okay. Now go to the load effects and just open the LCS to see the local axis for the numbers for the purlin. the vertical direction in which this particular shear is acting the vertical direction is z direction so we have to plug in the load in vz it is in upward direction so minus 3.6 okay so we can see that this particular force has been added and for this purlin the local axis are upside down so we have to plug in the value in positive direction so it is okay all right now one important thing just go to the wire frame model now we can see that at this particular location of the bolt there is some bending moment this value but it but it should be zero at this bolt why because this single bolt cannot handle the bending moment so how to do so just go to purlin and forces in load change it to forces in bolts so this shear force must be transferred directly to this bolt and in actual it is really happening when this joint is built on the side so this shear force is actually acting on the bolt rather than at this node why because this node is physically in some eccentricity with this bolt so the bolt cannot carry the bending moment now let's go to the load effects now this particular selecting this And this particular bending moment is now gone at this pole bending moment here bending moment here but there is zero bending moment at the bolt similarly do for this particular purlin 2 forces in bolts and load okay so this is a very important thing now let's just selecting the truss braces this one so we are talking about this joint and this joint so let active only now go to results forces truss forces load combination number 2 value maximum apply so this particular member this one is the d1 d1 d2 d2 vertical vertical all right so d1 is having the axial force of Minus seventeen point five minus indicating the compression member. So go to D one, load 
load effects d1 n value we can put it as 17.5 we can see its compression right for the d2 5.8 tension d2 5.8 tension okay and for vertical it's 1 kN tension as well all right so we have applied the forces now let's just calculate the analysis So analysis has been performed so we can see that analysis done 100% plates are utilizing plates are having 0.3% of plastic strain bones are utilizing 20.4% and welds are utilizing 80.5% now but first of all we have to check the deflected shape deflected shape is must before any inspection so just go to check tab click on the equivalent stress mesh and deform and deform so we can see that this is the deform shape and this deform shape is actually predictable according to the loads this is not a buckled member because this scale factor is 10 all right so it is okay now we can check the plates these are the sigma stresses equivalent stresses maximum equivalent stresses on the plates we have used a 36 material for each member each plates which is equivalent to 250 mpa so the maximum stress is reached is 224 in the top cord. This is the plastic strain, equivalent plastic strain. The maximum value for this is reached at 0.3 for the top cord. We can also see this plastic strain by clicking this button. So we can see this one at this point there are some plastic strains developed in the member top part we can also check the bolts calculation each bolt this one in preview so we can check in detail whatever will be the calculations for corresponding for this bolts and for welds as well these are the welds and these are the welds calculations we can check and then we can make the report for this so I am not going in that much detail for the report part because I have described this part in the previous video so this is up for today in the upcoming videos we will design other remaining connections of this truss shed using idea statica if you like our video then please hit like and subscribe button and share with your friends and you can comment below for your desired content or desired videos i will try to make that content for you so see you in the next video